Hi, I'm Alex, VA3ASE, and this is my Aero Antenna Mini Array. Today we're going to finish putting together our station, including building some new controllers, and then we're going to get on the air for some real QSOs. We ended my last video with the antenna array fully assembled, but no way to control it or test it. I can manually move the rotors using this control box, but I want to hook this up to computer for PC control, and there's no way to connect this Yaesu control box to a PC directly. You need some kind of control interface that will go between the remote control plug on the back of the Yaesu box and convert that to a USB signal that I can plug into a PC. You can buy different options for this. I prefer to build my own. There's a really good project by a ham called K3NG and he's documented it really well. So I've built a couple different controller boxes using his design. In this case, I tried to go as minimal as possible. I've assembled a small circuit board with an Arduino Nano, and that's gonna mount it right inside the box here. The one downside is there will be no LCD display to tell what's going on, but technically all that information should be displayed on the PC anyway. So I'm at a stage now where I can command the rotor to move from software. So like right now, if I wanna raise the rotor, I can. And that's just working through the Arduino interface that I just showed you. So what I'm doing right now is taking it. So what I'm doing right now is taking the time to calibrate the analog outputs from the Yaesu box that are going through the interface to the PC. I want to make sure that if it shows 180 degrees on the PC, it also shows 180 on the display here and that the rotor is at 180. So whenever you're working on an engineering project like this, I've grown to expect the unexpected, if that makes any sense. And I've got a good example here. The rotor controller is working. I can control it from the PC, but the feedback is not right. And I've done some digging in it, and it seems like one of my analog inputs is dead, specifically the feedback from the azimuth position. I didn't want to add an LCD display, but that made setting up the code and getting the rotors calibrated more difficult than I expected. And troubleshooting was a bit hazardous too. So I decided to start over again. I added this Nextian touchscreen display, GPS, running it on an Arduino Mega, and it's all powered off the Yaesu control box. So taking a closer look, the circuit is actually simpler than it first appears. Everything's been assembled on a Proto Shield board, which is plugged into our Arduino. At the core of this controller, we have these four transistors. These are connected to digital outputs from the Arduino, and they control relays inside the Yezu box. We also have two 0 to 5 volt signals from the rotors that are giving us position feedback. This board pretty closely follows the K3NG schematic. There are some resistors and capacitors I've also added, and some diodes. These are all just for protection to, of the Arduino. You might have noticed I also added this GPS module. This is mostly just for fun, because, you know, we're having fun, right? But it will also display the time and our grid square on the screen. I mostly included this just to experiment with it for a future project I'm working on, involving the moon. Please subscribe. So this screen looks really nice, but it draws too much power to just be powered off the Arduino and the USB port, so we need external power. Luckily, the Yezu box provides an unregulated 15 volts on the remote port, so I just needed to add this 12 volt and 5 volt regulator to power the Arduino and the display. So now we just need an enclosure for all this. That's better. Okay, moving forward, we need some way to control the polarization switches. I'm planning to use these four position selector switches. The connections will be pretty simple. We'll have 12 volts coming in and two four conductor control cables running out to the switches in the array. So I started assembling the box and I had to drill a couple holes in the top for cables and the entire top of the box exploded. So that's what you get for buying cheap boxes off AliExpress. Instead, I just went ahead and printed my own. Um, this is gonna be nicer anyway. So the next thing we're looking at is tuning the antennas. I'm going to be using a Nano VNA, 
and I'm going to be tuning each driven element to the same frequency on each pair. Uh, so I'm going to aim for kind of a center frequency uh, centered within the different amateur satellites that we're using. I don't think the specific frequency matters so much as long as they're consistent. If the two antennas are tuned to different frequencies, then when we phase them together, it's going to do weird things with our polarization patterns and uh, just lower the performance in general. So it doesn't take very long to use one of these guys. And we're going to adjust the, ga the, the gamma match on each antenna just to get them, get them equal. I'm aiming, I'm aiming for 435.7. And right now I'm seeing an SWR around 2.4 to 1, which is not very good. We can do better than that. So I'm going to start adjusting it. So my final number is 1.02 to 1, which I'm happy with. Now I'm going to do 2, two meter, and I'm aiming for 145.7 on these. Right, 1.1 and So I used to use a tripod for putting up my satellite antennas. Did that for a few years. And then, I don't know, at one point I discovered that you could just use a step ladder with a hole drilled through it. And that was essentially the same thing, but a lot more portable. And also you can climb it. So I've just been doing that ever since. Um, of course, this is for like a temporary setup, like field day or whatever. Um, so yeah, I've got my tower, if you will, set up. That's an eight foot step ladder with about, a, about an 11 foot uh, aluminum mast and uh, now we're ready to stick the antennas on it. This is the, the big moment. Okay, so the arrow array is mounted. All of our cables are hooked up. So we got this big thick umbilical. It's gonna run just through the window for now. And uh, I think we're ready to head into the shack and try it out. Okay, so the antennas are mounted and I've got everything routed into my shack here where I've got it set up as sort of a temporary setup mimicking what I'm gonna be doing at field day. So here you can see I've got the rotor controllers. I'll show you how this works in a second. We've got our antenna polarity switching for transceiver, I'm using my ICOM IC9700. This is a full duplex transceiver. It's really made for satellite and for weak signal VHF, UHF work. Looks a lot like an IC7300, which a lot of you have probably seen, but it's, uh, it's purpose made for this exact application. And then of course my laptop. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's try it out. Let's see how well it works. So I'm just going to click that. So the radio has jumped frequency. Our controller is uh, commanding the antennas to move, which they are doing. Isn't that awesome? It's awesome when it all uh, it all comes together. All right, let's uh, let's see if anybody's there. 
Okay, the ISS is rising. There we go. Victor Alpha 3, Alpha Sierra Echo. Victor Alpha 3, Alpha Sierra Echo. You hear that? That was me coming back. VA3, AAC. Okay, that was unsuccessful, but also successful. Now, what was successful there, even though I did not make a contact, was that I put my call out and I could hear myself coming down on the down mic. And that's why we need a dual, uh, sorry, that's why we need a full duplex radio, like the 9700 here, uh, because they have the full duplex capability, meaning you can listen on one band while you transmit on another band. And satellite is kind of unique in that uh, requirement because we, especially on the linear satellites, you're transmitting and you want to receive, be able to hear yourself on the downlink. And if you don't have your transmit and receive frequencies aligned properly, when you transmit, um, let's say you're calling CQ and somebody replies to you, if you can't hear yourself, then there's no way you're going to hear the other guy replying to you. So the number one step is making sure that you can hear yourself before you really worry about anything else. And once you can hear yourself, then you know that you're getting into the satellite well. You can give yourself a signal report. I mean, you wouldn't, but you, you, can, you don't need to bother asking for a signal report because you already know that you're getting in cleanly. And uh, anybody else who's listening to the satellite is going to hear the same thing as you. Um, and then, ideally, you'll call CQ and somebody will answer you. So that's what we're working on now. Uh, next satellite is coming up in uh, half an hour. So we'll, uh, we'll give it a try again. Satellite RS-44 rising. CQ satellite, CQ satellite from Victor Alpha 3, Alpha Sierra Echo. Victor Alpha 3, Alpha Sierra Echo, CQ satellite, CQ satellite. We're in it now. So right now I'm, I've got both set to right hand. So do it. Victor Alpha 3, Alpha Sierra Echo. Victor Alpha 3, Alpha Sierra Echo, Whiskey 7, Bravo, Mike Delta, Charlie November 87. Okay, Whiskey 7, Bravo, Mike Delta. Thank you for uh, Charlie November 87. Um, name here is Alex. We're in Foxtrot November 04. USL, thank you. Very nice, very nice. Uh, yeah, your uh, satellite's heading down for me here. I got 12 degrees, but uh, near uh, 5 and 7 here easily. Uh, very good signal here to Seattle. That's awesome. Thanks for coming back. I'm uh, trying out a new antenna setup here, and you're the first uh, first QSO in the log with the new, new antennas. Thanks so much, Chris. Whiskey 7, Bravo Mike Delta, Victor Alpha 3, Alpha Sierra Echo, 7 3. Woohoo! <laughs> Alright. Well, we're starting to lose it, but we just did our first contact.
That's amazing. So that was on satellite RS44. Yeah, that's really exciting. I'm 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 happy. So I'm gonna put a bunch more time into practicing the, with the setup and trying to log more contacts, and uh, just kind of get familiar with it, re relearn the software and and the hardware. It's been a little while since I was really active on satellite, and then um, that'll wrap up this video. Part three is the big day, field day. So we're gonna be tearing down the station here and packing it all up and then uh, lugging it out to the site for my, my favorite day of the year, which is, uh, which is the field day, the ARL field day. And uh, we're gonna be participating in the AMSAT contest that happens during field day, which is called the AMSAT uh, field day on the satellites contest. This is kind of a minimalist setup I'm not planning to be super competitive, but um, we'll see what happens. It's, it's always a fun time. So thanks so much for watching. Um, I wasn't prepared for the amount of interest from my last video, and uh, it's been really cool just seeing your comments and seeing how much excitement there is for, uh, for what I do, what, I, what I'm excited about. Um, I'm not used to that. I'm used to this just being my own kind of weird hobby that I'm uh, pretty excited and passionate about. and. Uh, really kind of inspiring to see that there's so many other people that are interested so thank you appreciate it and uh subscribe if you want to stay tuned for part three take care